Bob here, Chopper Bob Customs. And I'd like to start out today by giving a big shout out to a guy, um, Martin Blaney. Uh, Martin's has made some comments on here and he's liked a lot of the videos. And that's the reason I'm giving him a big shout out because you should be more like Martin and like the videos and subscribe and comment. Uh, but the thing about Martin is, Martin's like the, I don't know what his title is, but he's like the number two guy at Custom Autos by Tim. And I got it straight from the number one guy at Custom Autos by Tim that uh, Martin is an integral part of the organization over there and things don't get done unless Martin makes sure they get done. So uh, Martin's a great guy and uh, um, Custom Autos by Tim is an associate partner with uh, Diamond R Racing's Blown Retirement Funny Car. If you come out to the track and see Blown Retirement, you'll see the CABT, which stands for Custom Autos by Tim, right there on the rear quarter panels. And they're a big help to our racing program. And I'm gonna put their uh, YouTube link in the comments and on the video itself. You need to check it out. These guys do six door conversions of F-350s and F-450 and uh, Ford Excursions, I think it is. Uh, they do fantastic work on these conversions to the point where if the vehicle is still under warranty with Ford, Ford will continue to honor the warranty. They're, they're approved by Ford. Uh, they'll also work on the trucks. If you need to have something done, you can take it to a Ford dealer and they're recognized as a, an official Ford modifier of vehicles and so there's not going to be any hassle with the Ford dealership. And the trucks are just beautiful. Uh, we had some at the uh, Guthrie Road celebration. If you go back and look at that video, uh, you'll see them. Uh, but check them out and by all means, uh, thank them for uh, supporting uh, Blown Retirement in the Diamond R Racing field and uh, thank them for uh, paying attention to our videos. They're, like I said, they're good people. Uh, they're right here in Guthrie, USA. And uh, I mean, it's like one of the best kept secrets of Guthrie is that we've got a world-class, and I mean world-class because they ship these trucks all over the world, uh, and uh, uh, they're world-class trucks. So um, uh, at any rate, check them out, and we thank them for their help on the, on the car, and also I thank them for uh, liking and commenting on the videos. And I'm asking you to like and comment and subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. Uh, today, um, I'm waiting on parts on the uh, 58 Delray, but there's some things that I can take care of, and one of them is right here on the 383. Uh, this is the, the 383 that's going into the car, and one of the things that uh, it needs is it's got a very nice billet aluminum uh, timing chain cover, but there's no timing marker, and so what we've got to put on it for a timing marker uh, is an RPC racing uh, power company um, timing tab and the truth of the matter is this is a very pretty piece it's very nice but it's sort of designed to work for a stamped steel cover and so we're gonna have to make it work on the uh, 383 with this billet cover so there's some things that you have to do now I'm telling you this a guy could take this thing slap it on there and make it work just the way it is without making any modifications and without paying any attention to details. But the thing about the timing marker is it helps you make sure that your engine has correct ignition timing. And if you don't have that, it can lead to poor fuel economy, it can lead to poor horsepower, it can lead to detonation, it can lead to engine destruction. Uh, I learned that when I was 16 years old. So don't ask me how but I know I had an engine timed incorrectly and if I had it to do over again I know what to do now so at any rate so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna determine that these two bolts right here need to come out and uh, I'll give you a little insight I've already pre loosened them a little bit so they should come out fairly easy yes now one of the first things that you'll see when you pull them out is that they have a lock washer and that lock washer actually goes into a register in the um, uh, in the um, cover. And I don't know whether you can see that in the video or not, 
I'm going to zoom in here. But right here, the register is machined out and that lock washer drops down into it. Well, if you just take and put this timing tab, which is flat, on there and put the bolt with the lock washer on it, you're going to warp this to crud. So what I'm planning to do on this one is, I'm planning on putting the lock washer on first, then the timing tab, and then the bolt. Now that's not going to have optimum performance of that lock washer, so what I'll do is I'll probably put a dab of, uh, of uh, Loctite on the threads just to make sure it doesn't back out. So with that said, let's get you back out. And so I'm going to go ahead and take the other bolt out. Next thing that I know I'm going to run into is because this billet aluminum piece is thicker in this area and it's got a nice radius. I mean, this is a very nice piece. But the timing tab, when it fits up there like that, it does not, it shoves it out so the bolts won't go into the hole correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and relieve the timing tab in this area right here. Because if you look at it closely, and I don't know whether you can see this in the video, when they stamped it out, they, they stamped it right here, and then they put this brake in there, and the brake has a radius in it. And what I'm hoping is that radius will accommodate the radius on the uh, timing cover, but these tabs right here that are sticking out push it out. And so we're going to see if we can't get it to fit a little bit better. See how that does. Take and we'll put the bolts in. And we'll put the washers on. And I'm just going to dry fit it for right now. I'm not going to put the Loctite on it because I know I've got more work to do. And now we have run into the second issue. And I'm going to go handheld here so that I can get you in there and see what's going on. Uh, this is where you'll need your Dramamine, folks. Because that timing cover is very thick right here, it spaces this timing tab out so that it is out beyond the timing marks. Um, uh, the timing mark is right there. I don't know whether you can quite make it out. It's just in behind the tab. I had brought it up to top dead center. So one of the things that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a little bit of bending and what I want to try to do is keep this edge here parallel to the face of the of, of the balancer but it needs to go back in oh, about a quarter of an inch so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see what happens if I can actually just get it back that far and yes I can but now one of the things that you can see is happening is is that when I do that all of a sudden that timing mark starts peeking out from behind the timing tab, which means that the timing tab is not going to be accurate if all I do is bend it out of place. And the truth of the matter is, uh, the timing tab may not be 100% accurate anyway. So that's one of the things we're going to address later on in this video. But for now, I am going to go back onto the stand. And uh, I'm going to see if I can't get this timing tab. And I've, I've got it to the point right up here at the top where I think that it would probably give me a reading. It's not going to give me much of one. But I think what I'm going to do, without marring it if I can, is give it just a little bit of a tweak. There, yeah, that did a nice job on it. And... So now, 
I'll be able to see the mark, but now I don't know whether you can see that or not. Um, it has there's the timing mark. So the timing mark has come completely out from underneath the tab, where before it was underneath of it. So we know that the timing is going to be off. And I'm awful close to the balancer. So I'm going to see if I can tweak it up a little bit. Spin the engine around. Now I do have the, the spark plugs out of it. So it should turn over fairly easy. See if uh, it clears all the way around. I may want to space it out just a little bit further, but let's see what happens when I roll the engine over. Okay, so it doesn't hit anywhere. Uh, let me see if I can't just give it just a little bit more of a tweak. That will allow me to get a good time on it and not hit for sure. Okay, so we're, um, I'm going to roll it back the other way. Um, direction of rotation and I'm gonna kind of guesstimate about where 10 degrees is and then in the number one cylinder hole I'm gonna put this apparatus in there uh, this is a piston stop and so what you do with the piston stop is you thread it into the spark plug hole And you don't have to get ham-fisted with it, but you just want it snug so that it's not going to have any movement in it. And then you take the stop and you gently thread it in. And I usually, that's what I forgot was a screwdriver. Um, because I will usually give it just a little nudge with the screwdriver to make sure that it's seated properly because when I roll the engine around back to the stop it's going to probably have a little bit more on it <clears throat> coming around. So now what I want to do is I want to take and put a mark and I'm going to put it on zero just a little mark to indicate that that's where the zero is on the pointer with the stop at the piston. And so now I'm going to roll it around. What I found out was, was that my checker won't work with angle plugged heads. So what I did was I managed to take a, an Allen wrench and a piece of uh, rubber uh, vacuum cap, got it in the hole, cranked it around until I saw this Allen wrench move just ever so slightly at the end. I cranked it back around the other way to where it just moved ever so slightly again. And basically what I found out was, was that the distance from the timing mark to this mark right here is about 3 16 of an inch shorter than from the timing mark to this mark back here. So what that means is, is that the timing mark is too far this way. It's too, it's too far advanced basically, which means that it's about two degrees off uh, on the timing. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out whether or not I can move this marker two degrees and what I would need to do to do that I've got it setting on zero right now and what I need to do is bend it this way uh, no that's not correct I need to bend it that way because basically 
this distance is shorter than this distance, so I need to move the zero back that way about two degrees. Yes, yeah, I went the wrong way. Okay. So, I need to go four degrees this way to make it right. So, let's see if I can take the bend out of it. So this is going to get it, and, and you got to remember that uh, watching the movement of this thing right here uh, is not going to be super exact, but that's probably got me within a degree of where it needs to be for good timing. Um, now I'll go ahead and get some yellow paint on the mark, and I'm just going to be able to see just the edge of it, and it's going to be back up here. So. Um, it would have been great to have, with the heads off, actually used a piston stop to make sure that this was indexed correctly, but since the engine was put together, uh, this is going to have to be close enough. It's definitely a lot closer than the way it was straight out of the box because it was off just about two degrees. So now we've got it set so that it's a lot closer than it was from just slapping it together. And two degrees may not make a huge difference, but you want to be as accurate as possible because sometimes you can get these parts, put them all together and find out you're five, six, ten degrees off and then you can't understand why the car is rattling when you've got the timing set where it's supposed to be and that's because the timing's not set where it's supposed to be. It sets what it's showing on the, uh, on the timing tab but that's not exactly what, uh, what you've got for uh, uh, doing the timing. So what I'm going to do now, just to make sure that I don't lose anything, I'm going to get some so I've got some Permatex and I'm just not quite trusting that uh, lock washer on the back side. So what I'm going to do is one at a time I'm going to pull the bolts out and I'm going to I'm going to make sure that my timing mark is on where I can see it. And I'm going to pull them out one at a time. I hope my lock washer doesn't fall out. I think it's captured back in there. And I'm going to put a little dab of Loctite on the threads. Now we've got the timing set up on this, so when we go to time it, it's going to be as close as we can get under the circumstances. A lot closer than it was when it came in here. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, please like comment if you've got a better way of doing this let me know and um, uh, but this is the way I do it and like I said it's best if you can with the heads off put a piston stop on it roll it around put a mark roll it back the other way put a mark and then check the distances between the marks to see if your timing mark is actually where it's supposed to be and the adjustable pointer um, it's a lot more expensive, uh, but it obviously is a little bit more accurate and you don't have to do the bending like I did on this one. But the truth of the matter is the bending works just fine and you look at it and it still looks just like the chrome piece that it was when I started. A sharp eye could probably see that it's been adjusted, but a sharp eye would know that it was adjusted for the right reasons. So, like, subscribe, comment, and uh, until later, Chopper Bob out.